and uh, let's see how well we can uh, screw this up. Let's see if we can uh, start reassembling our pinion. Get our housing situated in our holding fixture. And you get the bolt holes lined up. It can only go one way. Probably should have rotated it the other way. All right. And we have some uh, 3 8 bolts, 3 8 by 16. These are a little longer than what normally goes in the pinion housing. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we've got our bearing spacer here, and these are our shims in order of size. These are the biggest, and these are the smallest. Uh, we have the old pinion nut and old pinion thrust washer. I guess we'll reuse that. I have a new one of these, but this will be used just for the, the uh, preload adjustments. Let's go ahead and get our spacer in place. Now, the most books say to go ahead and just use your whole stack of shims. Uh, I think that's going to be way too much and it'll be an exercise in academia, to be honest, which may in fact prove useful. So we will not be able to obtain the preload uh, first go around if we put the whole stack on it. I'm pretty much convinced of that, but I guess we're gonna go do it anyway. So I'm gonna assemble these in order of size. Some are three, some are five, some are eight, some are blah, blah, blah. I think the biggest one is 20 thousandths. And we'll put those on top for easy access later on. All right, here's our new uh, SKF bearing. This is the Dash A. It has that uh, little bit of extra fillet radius built into it. I pre-tested it earlier. It is quite a bit tighter than the original Dash A bearing I pulled out of here. Uh, but it does, in fact, go on, unlike the uh, regular Timken without the Dash A. So this outer bearing is, let's call it snug. It's not press. It's just a really snug slip. So whenever I take this off of here, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to use a bearing puller. Ow! Those pinion. Uh, I'm telling you, those things are sharp. Dang. All right, we bottomed out. We got like a million things of, of uh, you know, a play and stuff. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you can't do anything else with that. It's, it's down, all right? So that's the full stack of shims. All right, so having said all that, we got to remove this thing. So we're going to be using our safety bag. So we didn't get anywhere near our desired destination.
Yeah, we're going to need a little gentle persuasion there, I think. There we go. That's not too bad. I vacuumed out this bag before I started this. <laughs> Got all the sawdust out of it. Okay, so let's uh, let's decrease our shim stack by half. That's 0.035. That's 35,000. Let's take it down to 35 thousandths. That's basically two of these uh, thicker ones. All right, we got uh, 35 thousandths in there. All right, I wised up and got myself a glove there. Grab that sharp gear. Nope, that is bottomed out. On that shim stack, we got to pull it out again, start again. All right, just for grins, we're going to put this thing in here with no shims on it whatsoever and just see what happens. That uh, bearing's getting a little easier to get over that uh, shaft which is good, makes my life easier. All right, so I've got this thing in here without any shims in it now. So if I still can't get all the way down, clearly I'm gonna have to cut my bearing spacer down farther. So this is just sort of a sanity check, which, which it could mean that if we don't bottom, if we do bottom out and we still have play, that means the original crush sleeve wasn't crushed to begin with, possibly. I, I need to stop with the thought experiments, really. I still, I mean, I have a, a little bit of play. I don't know how much. 30 thousandths maybe, I don't know. But I think it's time to put a little torque on it and just see what happens. I have a sneaky suspicion that we're gonna have to take some off of our bearing spacer. Possibly a fair amount. That's probably about 30 or 40 pounds. All right, here's where we are. Our bearing spacer, it's right about there. We've installed the bearing spacer uh, with no shims on it and tightened down to 90 foot pounds and it still had a little play. Uh, that means that we need to go ahead and cut down the bearing spacer a little farther so that we can use our shim pack to adjust our pinion bearing preload. Seeing as how a pinion bearing spacer is a very precision part and you really need your tolerances to be spot on accurate, you know, within one or two thousandths, uh, the procedures by which you go about actually cutting a bearing spacer or shaving a bearing spacer need to be highly, highly precise and need to be done by a professional. But we don't have any of that. So uh, I'm just gonna use a, a hand sander and my wits. How about that? And uh, we'll measure from time to time. And we'll just see how this goes. That's 220, by the way. 
So I did a little 320 on this earlier by hand, you know, like that. And uh, I got the surface really, let me show you what that surface looks like. All right, it looks, you know, looks pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfecto, but it just has to be consistent all the way around. And this is 0 0.701 to 702 all the way around. So it's within a thousands all the way around. Let's go ahead and get busy and uh, let's see how well we can uh, screw this up. All right, let's see if we did any damage. Not sure I took off anything. <laughs> Probably didn't leave it on there long enough. Eh, that's 0.7 right there. And I wiggle it back and forth a little bit to make sure you get it down all the way. That's, yeah, we've got some work to do, so let's carry on. All right, so I went up to uh, Hobo Freight and got a pack of uh, 80 grit uh, sanding discs. The 220 uh, wasn't cutting it and we are down to 0.695, so we've knocked off five thousandths with the 80 grit. That seems to be, I didn't want to go, go to 40 or 60. I thought that might be a little too aggressive. So, all right, so this is going to be a long and very tedious process. I'm going to continue with the 80, and we're going to take this thing down to probably 690 and then probably reinstall it and see where we are. All right, so let's see what that little bit of uh, sand in got us, just to give you an example of what we're dealing with here. All right, so now we're down to 692. There's a 691. 691. 690, 691, 688. So anyway, part of that is the tool. All right, so I'm gonna continue on, take a couple more thousands off this thing and put it back in the pinion housing and see where we're at. All right, we've made some progress here. Uh, we took the bearing spacer down to 684. Let's measure it all the way around just to make sure. 684, 684, 684. Looks good. I'm impressed for a hand sander. How about that? Okay, so uh, we took this down to 684. That's 16,017, roughly uh, less than what it was. It was right at 0.7 or 701 when we started. I just got through retesting this again, and I put it in here uh, without any shims on it and tightened down some just to see where we were because this is a really huge guessing game. So I was able to basically tighten this thing to where it just doesn't move. I didn't go crazy with it because you don't want to ruin stuff because there's no, you know, you don't want to overdo the preload, right? So anyway, so we know that the bearing spacer is basically the right size-ish, right? In other words, it's short enough to where now we can start building uh, shims on top of it. So we took 16 thousandths out of it. So let's just say our starting point was 0.7. So between there and 0.684, the preload exists in that area somewhere. I don't know where. So I think what we're going to do is probably start, uh, put a stack on here that equals probably, I don't know, let's say 0.695. And let's just see where that takes us. So here's our shim stack. So we want 695, we're at 684, so that's 11 we need to add. So uh, let me poke through my stack here and see what I can come up with. All right, so that is 18 thousandths. Let's take that little narrow one off. That That's it. <laughs> I'm crazy. Okay, 11, that says 13, whatever. 11, okay. Yeah, okay, let's put this on there and see how well we do. All right, let's wipe things down a little bit here. Get our shim stack on there. And uh, oh, by the way, this is the 
medieval thing I came up with to tighten the pinion flange. <laughs> so we'll just set that over there out of the way for now. You may recall you saw the pinion flange tool I created uh, in an earlier video, but um, I had to extend it with a pipe uh, because I just couldn't get the leverage. My thrust washer is already down in there, and we're doing this without a seal in place op for obvious reasons. You know, you don't want to... Doing all this, you'd ruin the seal, right? So... All right, so this one shim here is eight. We had 11 in there. We're going to knock three down. We're going to go to eight. We'll see what happens. All right, let me uh, get this thing back in there and then we'll uh, see how well we do. I dare say 90 is more than enough to test your preload tolerances. Now don't drop the spacers. Good job. That still spins a little freely. We were at 11. We're now at 8. We're just about there. All right. Let's take her apart and uh, adjust our shim stack. Making an assumption that me tapping on it with a piece of wood is not going to be enough force to damage that bearing. But don't tell anybody. I've got another one on the way just in case I screw this one up. So we're covered. Don't worry about it. We got eight here. Let's see where we want to go to next. How about two thousands off of that? You want to go to six? Let's see if we can go to six. I don't know how many different options we have in our stack here. <laughs> or I could just put the the uh, the six thousand shim on. You know, there's there's one right there. <laughs> how convenient is that? All right, let's put that on. That was easy. It put a glove on handling this gear, man. This thing's teeth on it are sharp. Gonna go easy. All right, we got six thousandths in there. We're we're getting close. Let me go get the uh, the inch pound torque wrench. I don't think we're gonna record anything, but. All right, so I didn't even bother filming that. We're nowhere near putting any preload on the bearing. I mean, if there is some, it's very minute. We're going to have to keep going down. I want to go down in 2,000s increments. So we've got six on there now. Let's go to four next. All right, lo and behold, look at that. It's like they knew what they were doing. Here's a 4,000s. You are the next contestant on the never-ending pinion project. Put that guy on there. 4,000s it is. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, reinstall and retest.
All right, that's a little over 100 pounds of torque. Let's see where we are. I suspect we'll have to keep going. Actually, no. We may have arrived, people. I ain't kidding you. Sorry, that sounded too much like another channel, didn't it? Okay, let me get the, uh, where did I put my, ah. All right, let's put this El Cheapo inch pound torque wrench to the test here. Power up. Let's see what we have here. Man. It doesn't register. So it's something less. This thing goes down to 15.9. But it feels better now than it ever has been, actually. So I'm, I'm thinking we're probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 8 to 10 inch pounds. I mean, I've, I've got some unbelievable, I mean, it feels good, you know, but we've got more to go. We're at 4,000. We may have to take a little bit off of the bearing spacer and build back up if the smallest shim we have is a four. All right, we gave her the old uh, sanding disc treatment with the 80 and then uh, polished it up with some 220. And uh, she's uh, 0.680 all the way around. So 680 thousandths and uh, looking pretty clean. So let's go ahead and install this with the four thousandths uh, shim. Make sure that's the right one. Yep, make sure it's on in the proper orientation. Quick sanity check on the ID here. That side is 1.425. I'm just going by the eyeball, but I wanna make sure my eyeball, that's 1.457, 1.426, yep. Okay, so my eyeballs are do, doing their thing. You can just barely tell the taper in it. Anyway, so let's reinstall four thousandths. So that will be 684. These little spacers here are to keep this tool from resting on this flange because this flange needs to be true. <laughs> and so we, we need to keep from damaging that. That's the point. Sanity check. All right, that's 100. Yeah, it's a little too tight, I think. But then again, what do I know? Oh boy, look at that. 22, 23, I think we're there, folks. I think we're on the low end, but we're there. The dial indicator torque wrench is what has been used typically, but um, I saw this digital one and I thought to myself, well, it's an inch pound torque wrench and it goes down to what we need. So, you know, why not use it? We're sitting at 23. It's, you know, it's oscillating back and forth between 22 and 23 and 24. It's hard to believe that that bearing is supposed to be that stiff, but then again, I've never done this before, so. 21, 22, 23 is where it's hovering. We could go more, which is probably what I'm gonna do. Let's take two thousandths off of the bearing spacer, and that should put us right in the mid to, the, mid to high level of the of the spec, which is 22 to 30 inch pounds on this test. So let me go ahead and do that off camera and I will be right back. All right, I had to rethink my uh, setup here. I thought better of the 100 foot pounds and I went, did a little research and read a couple of forums and there's some people on there that are confused about the torque setting between a 
bearing spacer with shims and a crush sleeve. With a crush sleeve, it's going to be really stupid high, like two or three hundred pounds. But with a bearing spacer, it's solid. You don't need to crush something. It just needs to be held in place. After some reading, I've seen some recommendations of that range anywhere from 120 to 140 foot-pounds of torque. After I increased the uh, torque to 120 foot-pounds, the, uh, the preload went much higher. It was like 40 or 50 uh, inch-pounds. So I was like, whoa, that's not good. After two or three more attempts, uh, what I have is a bearing spacer at uh, 676 thousandths in length, and I have two shims on it. I have a 8,000 and a 4, so for a total of 12, so that puts us at um, 688. Having said all that, we are back at our predetermined uh, preload. We're actually right on the high side, 32, 33, 31, right in that neighborhood. All right, I think we're finally done. I uh, took the bearing spacer out back over to the bench and put it on the hand sander, and I've got the maximum length of the of the uh, bearing spacer to 675 so my end goal was right in the 689 range somewhere in that neighborhood 689 688 689 690 total that is so i did a 675 measurement on the bearing spacer and then i added in a an 8000th uh shim and a six for 14 so that got me to 689 that's about where i thought i needed to be to get in the mid 20s on the inch pounds, and I think we've finally done it. 23, 22, 24 sometimes, but then again, that's just, you know, me as a human. Not being able to maintain equal pressure all the way around. stays in the mid 20s all the way around go a little faster Harris it's okay relax yeah I think that's the proper speed if you go too slow you, the readings are erratic if you go too fast the readings are erratic you got to get a feel for it really So we're looking at the mid-20s. So what I've discovered about this, yeah, definitely. If you go too fast, it's erratic. If you go too slow, it's erratic. I'm not sure what the actual speed you're supposed to do this is, but but uh, if I maintain the same speed and I'm consistent all the way around, I get in the mid-20s, which is pretty cool. All right, there you go. Um, 675 on the bearing spacer and 14 thousandths on the shim stack uh, for a 689. And that gives us a mid-20s bearing preload on the pinion housing. The uh, spec is 22 to 30 inch pounds. I think we are finally done. So uh, up next, I think I'll have to uh, disassemble this guy and put the seal in and then and tighten it uh, one last time and then set it aside. Uh, and then move on to our uh, differential carrier reassembly. So I told you earlier that I ordered another Dash A bearing just in case, right? So I spent a lot of time torquing, testing, removing, installing, torquing, you get the picture, right? On that other bearing, that SKF bearing. Uh, so I decided that since uh, you know, it had to deal with all my amateurish uh, experimentation. I thought I might retire it early. <laughs> and uh, I ordered a Temkin, and it arrived yesterday, a Dash A Temkin. And it came in from Rock Auto. I think they had one left or something. So basically, I exchanged the bearings. So interestingly, the Temkin bearing fits onto the shaft in a slip fit that I can slip over with my hand. It's tight but I can do it. With the SKF, even though it's the same bearing, it, you have to tap it on. You saw me with the pipe. You had to, every time, you had to tap it on. 
Uh, it's, I don't think, it's just not supposed to be that way. It's, this particular bearing on this shaft is supposed to be a slip fit. Uh, with the Temkin, it fits precisely the way it's supposed to be. So the Temkin is on there now, and we have already tested the um, preload. I, uh, with a different bearing, it turned out to be a little bit different. I had to pull the uh, bearing spacer out one more time, shave it just a touch, got it down to 673, and then I put a 15 thousandths uh, shim on it, and uh, that got us to a preload in the high 20s, which is fantastic. It's perfect. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm stopping right there. I think we have achieved nirvana, to be honest with you. So the only thing left to do now is to remove this flange one last time, install the seal, and put it back together. All right, we got the uh, pinion seal here. Nice, new, and pretty. And we're going to go ahead and give it the uh, ever so slight smear of uh, Permatex Ultra Gray just to give ourselves a fighting chance. Make sure it's square before you start this. And I am going to use this uh, El Cheapo uh, bearing driver tool. This is a 72 millimeter. You never go hog wild right out of the gate. If your seal gets crooked, the metal is too thin to correct. You, these things need to be driven in squarely. And I mean squarely. Knock my glasses off my head. All right, we are doing, we're doing good. We've got a little squeeze out all the way around with the uh, Permatex. That's really nice. This one last tap for government work. That looks good to me. And man. Mm, mm, mm. All right. Hey, listen to that. Rick is blowing leaves. Man, what took you so long, Rick? Most, most, uh, Seals of this type say, you know, put a little grease in there to... Well, I'm not going to put any grease on my... in my diff. I'm going to put gear oil on this. I think that will be just fine. Take one last look at our... flange right there. Make sure it's nice and clean. I do believe that it is. Uh, all right, let's put this thing back together. See how that pinion shaft slides up through that bearing like it's supposed to? All right, I forgot my new pinion nut. It's over on the workbench. Let me put the old one on there like that and let that dangle. I'll be right back. All right, we've got to uh, install a new pinion nut. I got a Dorman 57700. This is a 7 8 uh, by 14 nut. Uh, uses a 1 and 1 quarter inch socket. I've uh, been using the original pinion nut to do all of our testing and, uh, and all that stuff. Testing and tuning and adjusting and shimming and all that stuff. So we're going to put a brand new, this is the last torquing hopefully, <laughs> and we're going to put a brand new uh, pinion nut on our pinion assembly, and uh, oh, that's, that's really great. Okay, I've been using this 12-point uh, socket, and it seems to fit fine on the original one and quarter inch uh, pinion nut, but for whatever reason, it does not fit on the new one. So probably what I need is a hex socket. Uh, that's, that will probably work just fine. So, however, I don't need to torque this on camera. All I'm gonna do is torque this thing down to 120 foot-pounds. Then once I uh, torque this down, the pinion housing rebuild will finally be completed. 
Uh, after that, we can take this off of the uh, holding fixture and place it on the workbench and set it aside. And in the next video, we're going to jump straight into the differential carrier. All right, folks, that's all for now. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys know where it is.